down there's four types of salespeople. Before I start training, I need you to look in the mirror. Like I'm looking at you right now. I need you to look in the mirror. There's four types of people. I want you to write them down and I want you to identify who you are. Before I can start training you, I need you to know where you're at and don't lie to yourself. So there's four types of people. Number one, you got order takers. Write that down. There's order takers, okay? If you're selling under 20 cars a month, consistently, okay? Look at yourself right now. There's order takers. That's the first one. Second one, what is that? You got order takers and tour guides. Then you got salespeople. So number two is you got salespeople. Number one, order takers and tour guides. You know who they are. They're walking around the lot. What are they doing? They're handing out business cards, burning, burning lot ups, burning customers on the phone. Okay. It's cool. Listen, I sucked too once. I really did. I was the worst salesman in the history of time. I swear I was. And guess what happened? And then I said, I'm sick of it. And it changed. That's my deal with you. Order takers and tour guides. Number two, you got salespeople. What's a salesperson, Andy? It's a person that can go through the process of selling. You understand the meet and greet, the fact find, the qualify. You understand the certain things, but you can't close the damn screen door. Okay. Every time your manager gives you a pencil, right? You know what happens is you go inside and you're like, dang, man. You know, I don't like this. And guess what happens? You can't close anybody. So what happens is when you bring the pencil in, most of the time you bring in friction because you don't believe, right? And if you don't believe, what's a customer going to do? Well, number one, they're damn sure not going to believe. So what happens is your managers close almost all of your deals, or sometimes even your managers take your deals in for you and they don't even let you go in. So order takers, tour guides. Number two, you got salespeople. Number three, you got closers, write that down. Closers. If anybody's taking the zero to 100K course, you already know this, but I'm, I'm starting as, as a foundation of everything we're going to talk about today. Closers. What's a closer? Well, in, in most cases, how I view closers are most closers are people that can close the deal, but they negotiate down. And since they negotiate down, they're not a master closer, they're a closer. They come out of the office and people are like, hey, man, did you get that deal? They're like, oh, yeah, I closed it. Yeah, dude, you negotiated down, you gave a concession, and you didn't close for all the money. You know, I want you to close every deal. I want you don't, not to ever let anybody leave, but I will assure you that you could become a master closer. That's going to be number four. So let's go through them. Order takers and tour guides, salespeople, closers. And then master closers, which is why we created the world's number one training program called the Master Closer Seminar, teaching people to go get what they're worth, all right? Now, here's the deal. At the end of the day, when you go to work, what do you do? You trade your time for money. Isn't it time to trade your time for three times as much money? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Everybody, write this down and listen to me. Do you believe you have the potential to make more money? Yes or no? I already know the answer is yes. I already know it. I know what you think. The question is, why aren't you? Why aren't you making more money? So let's talk about this. We know what the four types of salespeople are. Let's talk about the three levels of skill. The three levels of skill are going to be, write this down, good, great, and unstoppable. Okay? Good salespeople, good salespeople, they earn 80,000 or under. That's how you know you're good. If you're earning about 90 to 120,000 right now, you're a great salesman. But if you're under, if you're, or if you're making 80,000 or under, you are a good salesman. Good, great, unstoppable. So zero to 80,000 is called good. 80,000 to about two Hunskies is called great. And I would say anything over 200 grand, you guys are getting into the unstoppable phase, which is what I care about, okay? My goal today on this Zoom meeting is to teach you to be unstoppable. Is it physically possible for me to teach you how to know every single close under the world when it's 11.05 and we're gonna be done at 12.30 today? No, that's not possible. But what I will hope and encourage you to do is to realize that there's a way better version of you inside of you and that I today unlocked that person and brought him out. And that's what I want to do. I want to unlock you. 
There's somebody that's made for greatness inside of you. There's a good chance you haven't been playing that person. We're bringing them out. Enough's enough. You're probably sick and tired of being sick and tired. Let's unleash. All right. So I wrote a couple notes here. Obviously, I got ADD, so I want to stay on track. I put making a connection is the difference between you and your competition. Everybody write this down. Make a connection. Look, this is probably the most important thing you'll ever know in your whole life is that if you can't make a connection with somebody, you're not selling them nothing, okay? When people pulled up on the lot, I knew what they got across the street. I knew it. I knew it every freaking time. Somebody did a piss poor job. Somebody had a scarcity mindset on their face that they were afraid to lose a sell. And guess what happened, okay? Somebody had a scarcity mindset. And guess what happened? The customer saw that they were afraid they were going to miss a deal. And guess what? That showed up. So they felt awkward or different. Maybe, maybe you didn't put on a show worth paying for. Maybe you didn't have any energy. Maybe you didn't smile. Maybe you had a bad day and you brought that with you to work. Okay. I don't know what it is, but I can assure you this, that starting from this point forward for the rest of your life, forever, understand this. The difference between you and everyone else will be your connection that you make with your customers. Every time that I sold, how I was able to close at 80 to 90% closing ratio, which people said was impossible, is because I made connections. You know what that means? Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. How you doing? Welcome to the store. Number one, I'm grateful to serve you. I'm going to give you world-class customer service today. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys. By the way, who are you here to see today? Man, look, judge me now. Go ahead. Judge me now. Let me ask you a question. How many of you guys don't have the courage to do what I just did? Courage separates the one percenters from the other 99%. That's it. It's courage. It is strictly courage. Some of you now out there right now, you're thinking, man, this guy's silly. Yeah, silly to 716 grand in the bank my last year selling. And you know what? I was the worst salesman in the history of time. But you know what I did? I raised my hand and I said, I'm going to be a student of selling until I die. Even today till this point, I train until I die. I train every day. I train for two hours this morning, mentally right here. I want you guys to understand this. There is a person inside of you that's unstoppable, man. Unstoppable. Everybody's going to try to convince you to give up on your dreams, stop selling cars, you know, get a, get a different job, do this. You know, this business is, you know, it's unsustainable, you know, income one big month. And then, and then you go down to a bad month. Your manager, listen, listen, excuses. Whee! Okay. Knock it off. Knock it off. Look in the mirror. You got the best damn opportunity in the world. All you got to do is quit fearing stuff. Stop it. What do you fear, man? Everything you want in life is on the other side of fear. Stop fearing stuff. Look at yourself right now. What's the one thing you're never going to stop doing? You're never going to stop being an actor ever. What does that mean? Well, here's the deal. Brad Pitt, he goes in Hollywood. They say, hey, we want you to play this part. This is how you need to act. You know what he does? He takes the script. He learns it. And then he goes and plays the part. And they pay him a bunch of money. And he has a great life. And then when he goes home, he's not that guy that shot that movie, okay? You know who he is? He's just a normal person. When I'm with my kids running around, you know what I do 90% of the time? I'm in my underwear playing and wrestling. I got a five, I got a six-year-old now, a, a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old, okay? And I love my wife and my family, my kids, but I love you guys. And here's my deal is I take it personal when you don't get better, okay? So stop not having the courage. From now on, when your customers pull up, the one on the phone, the one thing that you'll do that no one else will do is you're going to have a connection. You're going to make sure that you make a connection with them that no one has ever made. And how are you going to do it? You're going to understand the one thing about selling. People are judging you and they're judging you fast, just like you're judging them. When they pull up on the lot in the first, in the first 30 seconds or on the phone in the first 30 seconds. They are deciding whether they like you or they don't like you, okay? They're deciding whether they like you or they don't like you. So from now on, you guys got 30 seconds. You want to learn how to sell every single customer that pulls up on your lot? Put on a freaking show worth paying for. You know what you do? 
you walk up and you say, hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy. Number one, welcome to the store. I'm so glad you're here. At our dealership, we're gonna give you world-class customer service. We're gonna serve you in all the highest levels that are important to you and your family. I'm so grateful that you're here today. How can I help you? Bam! They're like, what the hell? Who is this guy? You guys ever go to Chick-fil-A and you drive through the drive-thru and you think, these people don't have to be that nice. You're right, they don't have to be that nice. But since they are, they have one of the number one operating businesses in the world because they do things they don't have to do. In this world, it's become so much as like people say, well, that's not my job and I don't have to do that. And isn't that going too far? I don't know. How much success do you want? Do you have a cap on it? You got a glass ceiling on your head? Or are you really ready to go all in on yourself? I think it's time. So number one, we make a connection. Connections are everything. I'm not going to live on this too long, but I'm going to tell you this. If there's no connection, there's no deal. No connection, no deal. Write it down. All right, let's look at holes in your game. Do me a favor. I want you to draw a picture of a bucket on your piece of paper, a bucket. And I want you to envision holes in that bucket. Those holes in that bucket, that bucket is you, that bucket is your skill set. Those holes or what's stopping you from becoming more successful. Imagine, so I've taken a bucket of water and I go to pour into your bucket. As I'm pouring water in, you have holes, the water pours out. Your bucket never fills and that's your, that's your life financially, that's your life with success, that's your life in general. That's the lifestyle you'll live, that's the freedom you'll have based on the money that you make, that's everything. Holes in your game. Right now, what I need everybody to do is I need you to do me a favor. I need you to write down three things, just three. Three things you know that you're not great at. Do me a favor, stop, next minute. The next minute, write down three things that you're not great at. Go ahead, what is it? I'm gonna talk about some stuff here. Is it confidence? Is it conviction? Is it enthusiasm? Is it your energy level? Is it believability? Is it your attitude? Is it yet you're not mentally tough? Um, you know, is it that you don't have a, a clear why of why you want to do great? Um, you know, you don't time block your day, right? Okay, maybe you're just, you're distracted. Instead of eating, you know, d discipline, you eat distraction, right? Okay, maybe, maybe you're a people pleaser. Maybe you want to please everybody in your dealership, so you care so much about what other people think that you can't become the real you, right? Um, you know, what is it? You, you, don't, you don't have any goals, you know, you, you don't get on social media, so you don't generate your own traffic. Okay, you hate the phone. You're scared to call people. Um, you know, you're really an introvert, right? Yeah, phone calls. Maybe you're not good on the service drive, but what's three things, just three, that are your holes? And what I would tell you is this, is that there's going to be some things you're really good at, and there's going to be some things that you really just suck at, okay? But you need to identify what those are. Maybe, yeah, like somebody said, hey, maybe it's drive-bys. Maybe it's somebody driving through the lot. And then basically when you, you know, you go out and say hi to somebody, you feel a little bit awkward. All right. Maybe you don't have a process. Maybe somebody taught you like the road to the cell. Right. And, and you know what it is on the piece of paper. Actually, you can probably recite it. You know what I'm saying? You're like, hey, give me the eight step system. You're like, boom, 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 boom. But then I'm like, all right, cool, man. Hey, do a walk around. Go ahead. Light it up. Light it up. And you're like, I mean, I just kind of show it, you know, and if they like it, they'll take it. And. Eh. You suck. Stop it. I'm telling you guys the truth. It, it, it pisses me off when you guys don't go get what you're worth. You kiss your kids and your wife or your husband goodbye in the morning or whatever's important to you and you go to work. Guys, whatever you do, just do it all the way. Be the best at it. And I want to explain this before we start actually the real training now, okay? Is you're either going to have a fixed mindset today or you're going to have a growth mindset. It's real easy. If your cup is full, yeah, you have no more room in your cup. The I know it all mentality, the I made it, I'm doing just fine. You know, that's some stuff that my dad tells me. My dad loves me, right? He loves me, man. My mom left when I was two, but my dad loves me. And I, so I call my dad. I say, hey, dad, you're not going to believe what happened. We're training 150,000 salespeople right now. We're growing faster than ever. It's beautiful. People are changing their lives. Hell, we're, change, we're saving people's lives. He's like, man, Andy. Man, I, I was I was proud of you when you know you uh, you know you're you, you were just selling cars. I've always been proud of you. I, I I love my dad for that. 
But see, the deal is, is that there's a, there's a level and, and there's this glass ceiling that my family's had on them forever. And they don't like to shatter those glass ceilings. And they, they, they taught us to think small and believe that, you know, and, and not that it's not enough, but you're just made for more, right? You know, I have this video based on mediocrity on, on, on YouTube. And it talks about um, this deal I was watching with David Goggins. And he said, hey, man, you know, if you died and you went to heaven and God had a chart in front of you and was like, man, you know, you were supposed to do all these things. But but you didn't because you just you, you followed sheep and you never went your own way. You know, you, you didn't find a mentor to push you. You know what I mean? You never unlocked that guy inside. I, Andy, I built you for greatness. You were supposed to do amazing things. OK, just understand that there's people going to tell you that it's enough. Guys, in the automotive business, you guys have the best opportunity in the entire world. You have the potential right now in the next five years to physically retire if you do it right. But what you have to do is you have to become the best salesperson in the world, not in your store, not in your state, but in the world. I can teach you how to do that. But you have to decide that if you no one's going to change your family's life, but you, you have to want to self-improve, which goes back to the growth mindset or the fixed mindset. And I need you to have a growth mindset with me. Having a growth mindset with me, it's, it's simple. Now we have somewhere to go. Okay. But having a fixed mindset, which is like, hopefully I'll get one or two things from this. Um, it just won't work. You're not going to unleash. You're not going to unlock and you're not going to become great. Do you guys want to be a legend, a legend or do you want to be one of the normal? Do you want to be your kids heroes and your family's going to remember you a thousand years from now? You can make that happen and you can do it in the automotive space. So with that, with that being said, I want to talk about something. Look at your holes. You guys wrote down what they were. I don't need to see them. You know what they are. Okay. And by the way, when we're done, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you guys my cell phone number just in case you want some help. I'm going to give it to you. Okay. And if you want to write it down, it's fine. It's 405, and I'll even put it right here, okay? It's 405. Man, I am a bad typer. 482-1991. I'm going to I typed it right there. That way it's sitting there. If you need some help, tell me what you need help with, and I'll help you, okay? I'm serious. And you don't have to disclose to everybody what your holes are, but you tell me what they are, I'll fix them, all right? So... Let's look at what an extremely sell, great salesperson looks like, okay? So take a piece of paper. This is how I do it. And I'm a visual person. So I'm gonna get this uh, ink pen right here and I'm gonna draw a picture. Oh, that sucks. I'm gonna draw a picture of a person. It's gonna be a little stick figure, okay? And I'm gonna say, this is you, okay? Or this is what one of the top salespeople in the world look like. Let's go around and let's decide, hey, you want to learn, you, you want to learn how to make 300,000 a year, 500,000, your first hundred. I, I saw someone earlier, they said, uh, you know, hey, hey, Andy, my first year, I made 108 or something like that. Dude, that guy right there, I think it was Russell. Russell is going to 250 this year. We're going to 250, but, but the things, what got you to 108, Russell, right, won't get you to 250. Okay, there's a book that says what got me here won't get me there. All right. So we have to decide to elevate and raise our skill set. So I am going to name some skills and I want you to label yourself from one to 10 where you're at. Okay. And actually, it would be really nice when we're done with this if you guys would take a picture of this and send it to me. And then I'll know exactly who you are, exactly where you're at, and exactly what you need help with, okay? So let's do the first one. This is you. The first one is going to be confidence. I want you to write that down, confidence. Guys, I will tell you something right now. If you don't have confidence in yourself, no one will have confidence in you. There's arrogance, there's cockiness, and then there's confidence. I've never met a closer who wasn't confident. It's impossible to be a great closer if you're not confident. When I have a deal and the customer says, hey man, 18 grand and I'm out of here. And by the way, if I don't get 7,000 for the trade and if our payment ain't under 400, we're not doing business. Says, hey, hey, I totally understand. You guys are gonna love it. I got your back for life. I'll be right back with you. Guess what? When I'm coming back and I'm going to raise them to 22 grand, 
at a 550 payment and giving them 5,000 for the trade. Now I'm going to take care of it. I'll also make sure that there's no disconnect between report and trust. Everybody write this down, report and trust. Those two things, just while we're on it, I'm not going to stick to it, but report and trust are the two most important things that you could ever have with your customers. If you lose report and if you lose trust, we don't have anywhere to go. What happens is a lot of people bring out numbers, okay? And even if they're higher than they want to be or whatever, when they bring out the numbers, they, the salesperson ain't confident in the numbers, okay? You have fear. They're not confident. So since you're not confident, what happens? The customer sees that you're concerned. Watch this. Watch this, guys. Pay attention. I bring in a deal, okay? And if I look even 1% concerned with the numbers, what are you going to do? You're going to be concerned about the numbers. A confident person doesn't look concerned because he's confident or she's confident. Take your confidence and raise it through the roof. You guys have to believe in yourself. You can't believe in the product. You can't believe in the numbers. You can't believe in the customer. You can't believe anything else until you believe in yourself. Doubt yourself and you'll fail. Go ahead and write that down. Doubt yourself and you'll fail. Don't you ever doubt yourself, ever. Never in your life, ever will you doubt yourself again. Don't do it. You're so much better than that. Do not doubt yourself. The one thing that you have to do is realize that we play a sport, okay? It's our career, but I'm just going to use it as a sport. That's kind of like boxing. It's kind of like wrestling. When you go into the ring, you go into the ring with someone else. It's just you and that person. And if you don't own your mind, they'll own you. All right. They'll interrupt you if you don't maintain control. And how can you maintain control if you don't have confidence? You see what I'm saying? Enough talking about confidence, right? Confidence. How do you rate yourself from one to 10? Rate yourself, please. Okay. I'd like for you to send me a picture of this when we're done and I'll help you, all right? Where, and by the way, don't lie to yourself, okay? I know that, and hey, if you're 10, 10 it up. Let's roll, okay? All right, headstrong, that's it. Conviction, next one is gonna be conviction. All right, so you say, Andy, what's the difference between confidence and conviction? Well, there's a lot, okay? Conviction means that you believe what you're saying, okay? So I'm sitting here, I was younger, I was 18 years old and I had a manager load my lifts. He said, Andy, I want you to go sit down next to him and I want you to lay this pencil out and I want you to say this and then shut up, okay? And what I did is that I listened to what he said. I said what he said. And guess what? The customer said, give me my keys, man. We're out of here. And I walked back out and I said, hey, man, this, this guy's wanting to leave. And my manager said, what? He said, did you say what I said? And I said, yeah, I did. And the guy, he goes, you didn't say what I said. I said, I swear on my life. I said what you said. He goes, give me a minute. Stay right here. So he goes in to talk to him. And I slide around the door, right? I'm kind of peeking and listening. And guess what I hear? Guess what? I hear him say the same thing. And he came in. He says, guys, I'm sorry. I should have came in here and said it myself. I sent Andy in to relay some information for you that he really didn't understand. Let me explain to you what it was that I was telling him I wanted you to know. And then I watched his hands, okay? And something magical happened. He started moving the way he felt and pushing it into the customer. He started with his eyes, with an eye contact that I'd never seen before. Like he was so sure of what he was saying. He wanted to make sure that the customer was just as sure. And he stayed locked in with his eyes. He didn't swallow. He didn't miss a beat and he didn't flinch. He didn't get triggered like most. And he made control of the whole conversation and he made them feel important. And while he was in there, it's like he had a spotlight on the customers. I could see them raising their energy the way that they felt because he made them feel that way. And they were starting to get momentum, believing that this was the right thing to do. But never once did he show them that he was a salesperson selling them. He held the spotlight. He kept them in it. Sell like a lion, act like a lamb. And guess what he did? He had so much conviction in what he believed in. The guy said, now that makes sense. He said, let's write it up. And guess what happened? The manager came out of the corner and he goes, Andy, write your deal up. Let's roll. And he walked away and it was like I had just seen an angel. 
I thought, my gosh, <clears throat> could I ever do that? The answer is absolutely. So can you. So you know what I did? Is that I started taping myself. I was horrible at it. I practiced bringing that pencil back in and saying that same word track that he said over and over. And what happened is that I thought I was just as good as him. I thought I was saying it the same way he was. But since I was taping myself, I got the honest to God truth. I sucked. It was embarrassing how bad I sucked. So what happened is that I taped myself a hundred times. And I can still remember to this day watching that first video and literally being just ashamed how bad I was. But then watching the last one after I taped myself a hundred times and I brought it in and I showed my manager back when we had VHS tapes, right? I said, hey, watch this. I did that deal you taught me. I've been practicing. And he goes, dude, you're good, man. He never saw that first video. All I'm going to tell you is I took that one instance, that learning lesson of me watching him and watching the conviction that he had. And man, I just stole it from that day. And I decided never again will I ever talk to anybody about any, anything at all, ever, without having conviction. And I see a lot of salespeople giving out information, right? How many times do you give out information? All day long. Say things, right? Give people advice. Tell them what they ought to be doing, what they need to do, what's the right thing to do. And you don't have conviction and you don't have confidence in yourself. And if you take those two missing factors and you were to kill this tape right now and you can fix those two things, you double your income. OK, let's move on to the next. All right. Here's what I want you to do. Love you guys. Look, take conviction one to ten. How do you rate your conviction? How well do you present everything that you give out? Does it look with full believability or not? Where do you rate yourself? Remember, this is between you and you. And if you want to bring me into it, all right, you can text me at the 405-482-1991. Send me your picture. I'll help you. Text me. I don't care, okay? I want you to be the best. You guys are my legacy, man. I want you to be the best, okay? You're taking the time to be with me. I'm grateful for you. I'm taking the time to teach you. This isn't everything, but what we'll learn today, this will help you sell 20 cars a month. You just got to listen to me, okay? All right, let's talk about enthusiasm. All right, write that down, enthusiasm, okay? So everybody's got to write down enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is a really important deal. Let me explain what enthusiasm is. It's the way you feel about what you're doing. You got some character, you got charisma, you got enthusiasm. You think people want to go and buy a car from somebody who's a coffin, dead, walking around the dealership? No. Okay. You think that they're finding that in other dealerships when they're going there? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, there's a video that I've got coming up. It's, it's not going to be released for about 60 days, but I've been shooting some episodes and you're the only people I've ever told. And it's called Andy Elliott Live in the Dealership Undercover. And what we did is that we went to a couple places. John Kuhn says, I'm a coffin, bro. You used to be a coffin. You're not anymore. We're changing that. Okay. But I want to say this to you. I walk into the dealership. People don't know who I am. I got my hat on and I walk in. I say, hey, what's going on? You know, I'm looking for this. And then I just let him walk me through the process for a minute. And what I realized to myself as we went and we greeted about 50 different salespeople, you know what we found? I found that these people don't bring anything addition to the table except information. They don't bring anything in addition to the table except information. If I wanted information, I'd have looked it up online. But I came to the dealership because I'm ready to make a decision. And I'm hoping that I can find a salesperson that can convince me and help, and help me with this freaking buying process and make it easy on me so I can buy something and go home and end it. Okay. I want you to think about this for a minute. Think, think. Your customers. Turn around, watch, watch this. Customers. You don't have to write this, but just pay attention. Your customers, okay? And I don't know if this is backwards because I'm showing this, but you'll get the point. Do you think that they're motivated? I don't think so. You think they got problems at home? Write down problems. Uh -huh. Do you think that they like energy? I think so. Okay. Do you think that they want to be around people that lift them up or bring them down? Probably lift them up. So with that being said, it'd be pretty safe for me to say, 
that when I saw someone on the phone or walking up on the lot, I could walk up. And as soon as I walked out, I'd be like, hey guys, what's going on? Sandy, how you doing? Welcome to the store. I'm so glad you're here today. And at that point, within three seconds, three, I'm gonna take control of them. I'm gonna show them this is my home and I'm gonna welcome them like it's their home. I'm gonna treat them differently than they ever been treated across the street. I'm a pretty smart person when it comes to street smarts. So not book smarts, but street smarts. I'm pretty confident that these people have bought a car before. 95% of people that you sell a car to have already purchased a car from someone else. How good of a job do you think that guy did? How good of a job did she do? You think she blew him away? Huh? You think he blew him away? Probably not. Why don't you? See, if you went to Starbucks right now and you took a survey of what people think about car salesmen, they'd probably say liars, robbers, cheats, thieves, all these things. What would they say after they met you? That's what I care about. That's what's important. I want you to think about this today. You have the ability to change the entire automotive industry forever. You have the ability to change how someone feels about an automotive salesperson and most importantly, how they feel about you. You have the chance to build your pipeline. It takes two or three hours to sell one customer. It takes a lot of money to sell a customer. It takes a lot of money to advertise to get a customer in the door. But it literally takes, you know, 10% of that to retain one. So what does your life look like in a year from now? If you treat everybody great and if you bring them up, and if you're more motivated to them and you're jacked up and you're fired up, what will happen? Well, they're going to come back and buy from you, but they'll buy from you right now. And there's a pretty good damn chance when we get to the social media aspect of it, that when you get a shout out from them and they put it on their Facebook page and tag their friends, when the friends say, hey, man, how was your experience with that guy? They're like, it's wonderful. You should go see him. Or the next time somebody talks about buying a car, you did such a good job that they went ahead and referred you, not even because you asked them, but because they felt like that the people should be there with you because you're that great. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever got a haircut from somebody that, by the way, I don't have hair, so it might be a bad deal, but that, that did such a good job that like next time someone is around, you're like, dude, you can go check out my guy because here, man, he's, he's great. You, they just did so good that you just automatically want to tell other people. Are you doing that? Okay, so the question is, Enthusiasm, become alive, wake up, wake up. Now is the time to become alive and wake up. Awake the lion, okay? Here you go, guys. Increase your energy, increase your state, and it will increase your customer state and make them want to buy. Do you have enough energy and enthusiasm to carry your customers through the entire sale? Have you ever seen somebody come in, drive a car, get kind of excited, look at it, and then die down? You know why? They were mirror imaging their salesperson. Okay? You go to sleep, they're going to go to sleep with you. Don't go to sleep. You know the reason why I could get so many people to purchase and buy from me when I sold? is because I kept them alive. I kept them motivated. They didn't want to not be around me. Listen, they did not want to not be around me. They wanted to be next to me. They wanted to be around me because I made them feel a certain way. By the way, compliment people. Enthusiastic people can compliment people. Hey guys, what's up, man? Number one, I'm so glad you're here. You guys are awesome, man. Yeah, dude, beautiful family. Like straight up, man. You guys need to be in a damn magazine. That's what's up. So look, so, so by the way, hold on, before we start talking about your family getting in magazines and all that, you know, where are you guys from? You know what I'm saying? What are you looking for? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Number one, I'm super fired up to be able to serve you in the highest level, but I'm just grateful that you're here. You guys seem amazing. And guess what? After about 20 minutes, guess what I say? I'm like, man, you guys might be some of the coolest customers I've ever had in my whole life. You guys are amazing, man. Can you guys adopt me? Can I get in the family? Can I get in the family? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll get you in the family. We'll get you in the family. Come on, baby. Go to the next level, man. Be creative. People used to say, Andy, when I watch you sell, 
I don't know how you come up with the stuff that you do. I say, it's real easy. I'm not asleep like you. Okay, I love you. I told you how to do it. You just don't listen. And by the way, this is important. If you don't want to change, you're not going to see any change. All the information that you get today, it's just information if you don't execute. It's just information if you don't take action. See, what I'm really good at is going from the idea to action that fast. So if I'm sitting here with you, and let's say I'm talking to Eric, and Eric shares an idea with me. Eric's like, so, you know, what did you think about it? He's like, Andy, Andy, where'd you go? I'm already gone doing it. I don't sit around and talk about it. I'm done. In my mess, I'm making my message. I'm gone. I, I take action that fast. Okay? You got three types of people. Let's move on. Three types of people. By the way, we talked about four types of salespeople, three types of skill, but you got three types of people. Okay? Right? Three. I love this. Three people. Kevin, what's up? Listen to this. You got three people. One, you got the victim man. Okay. He's the victim. She's the victim. You know what I'm talking about, right, guys? My mom left when I was two, right? It was Jerry Springer growing up. I barely graduated. Okay. I was the worst salesman in the history of time. I took $1,300, my first check, and I went and spent it on a seminar, $1,300. Um, I asked my dad to put it on his credit card. Um, you know, I, I just went all in and it took me from third, it took me from making, you know, three grand to making $10,000. Um, I, I got that check and I, I threw another $1,300 back out there again. And um, I, I took myself to making $20,000. I attacked, I, I sacrificed, I knew I was going to pay the price now or pay it later. I wasn't trying to save money. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to become the best salesman in the world. Some people are trying to save money. Uh, I, I don't want to retire. If I got to the top of a mountain, I just push my rock back down the mountain and restart. Um, I'm a person that loves to, to grind and to grow and to push. I, I would challenge you to do the same thing. Yeah, knowledge is nothing without action, okay? Tony Robbins does these five-day seminars and he talks about 98% of you will leave here. You'll take the information and you won't take action and your life will never change, Okay. And I want to tell you, so you got your first person, which is the victim. Wah, wah, wah. My family tree has been this way. You don't understand what I've had to go through. My mom and dad did this, did that. I've got a divorce. Listen, and, and by the way, I don't mean it like wah, wah, wah. Like I don't feel sorry for you. But what happens is, you know, you can either be your, your own greatest asset or your own worst enemy. Okay. So instead of you actually being able to push yourself, you're actually limiting yourself because of the way that you feel about the way that you were raised, okay? Maybe about something that's happened in your life. You know what I'm saying? Maybe nobody believes in you, who cares? Dude, they're gonna ask you how you did it when it's all said and done. And everybody's gonna say, in the beginning, they're gonna be like, dude, this guy's an idiot, let's laugh at him. Then they're gonna be like, wait a minute. All right, let me watch. You know what I'm saying? He, he must be cheating or they must be doing something wrong. And then in the end, when you do really well and you're killing it, everybody's gonna say, hey, how'd you do it? Can you, can you teach us how? Yeah, dude, that's your haters, man. Don't worry about it, okay? Attack what's yours. You got the victims. Then you got the information man. The information man, all he does is he gathers information his entire life. You have more than enough information to change your life, but you still think that you need more information. So what happens is you don't need any more information. You haven't taken information on the action that you're, that you're I mean, on the information you already have. You haven't taken action on it. So you have to take action. You have to. And then your third types of persons, you got the victim, the information man, and you got the executioner. The executioner is who I would love to challenge you guys to all be. This is where you execute. Everything that I'm teaching you right now, okay? This is 1% of what I know. But what I'm teaching you will change your life, can change your life, but you have to take action. If you don't take action, if you don't, nothing will change. I love you guys. I care about you. But even if I want to change your life, even if I want to change your life, I can't. It's completely up to you, okay? With that being said, that's enthusiasm. I hope you guys feel the enthusiasm that I have towards your future, okay? All right, energy. We'll keep this one short, but we'll make it simple. Lack energy, lack success, okay? You could be an engineer. I'm not, okay? You could be an engineer, 
and maybe you do an engineer job and you have to work around a quiet area, okay? You have very important stuff that you have to do and you're working numbers all day and this stuff and that. Okay, I get that. But if you're in sales, you've got to have energy. It's extremely important. People need to get excited to buy and spend money, point blank. They need to get excited to buy and spend money, done. You, as the salesperson, I call it seller management, you have to manage yourself to have enough energy to push into the customer to make them have enough energy to go through the buying process to stay with you the entire time to buy. Lower your energy, lower your sales. Increase your energy, guess what? Increase your sales, it's that easy. Every day for the rest of your life until you die. I wanna see more and more energy out of you. Every day, increase your energy by 10%. People ask me all the time, Andy, how do you manage the energy? I say, what do you mean? I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, yeah, but isn't it hard keeping that much energy? I say, I, I think it's hard not having any energy because I've lived life without it before and it sucked. It was God awful. I was unsuccessful. I didn't like myself. And honestly, it was boring. I would rather live dangerously, have a lot of energy and have fun then go sit down on the sidelines and not play the game. I'm out. Does that make sense? Energy, guys. Energy. Bring it. Give it to your customers. Okay? Your competition isn't. Your competition isn't giving any energy. Go blow their asses away. Blow them away. All right? Believability. Write that down. Energy. Write yourself. One to ten in energy. Believability. Okay? Believability means this. It's kind of like con conviction. But do you believe in what you're saying? Okay? Let me, let me say this. If I'm going to go tell you the sky's purple, okay, if I don't believe the sky's purple, then when I go talk to you about the sky being purple, you're not going to believe it. Believability comes with you believing. Write down believability. I'm not going to run with it for long, but everything you say, do you believe? Hey, guys, the reason why you want to buy a Honda, because hands down, they're the best car ever made. Hands down. No exception. Lots of great cars out there, but Honda's the best. Do you believe what you're saying? Yes or no? Guys, listen, I'm going to tell you this. Hey, Andy, is that your best price? Absolutely. Absolutely. I wouldn't have brought it out here if it wasn't. I would have brought out the best price. But I really did bring you out the best price because I love you. I love your family. I don't want to say just this car. I want to say every car you buy for the rest of your life, sir. Deal? Believability. Believe. Believe. That word is so strong. One to ten. What's your believability? All right. Attitude. Attitude. Rate your attitude right now. What's the attitude you're carrying around the dealership every day? Hey, you want to sell 20 cars? Guys, I'm not going to give you some road to the sell bull crap, okay? You want to know the road to the sell? Go buy the zero to 100K course right now. I'll walk you through it. I'll teach you everything I know. I'm wanting to find the holes. A lot of the times you already know some of this stuff. But this is the stuff that's killing that stuff that you know, your attitude sucks, man. No one wants to be around you. Or maybe you really do have a good attitude. But what's happening is you're letting other people around you affect that great attitude. So you're not playing at your high level. Okay? Attitude is everything. Okay? I always say your life, it will go the way you believe it will go. It's kind of like, the, the, have you ever seen that movie, The Secret on uh, Netflix? the law of attraction, okay? I believe how my life is going to go. So I have a great attitude towards how I believe it's going to go. And that's it. It happens. It says, do not entertain outside energies. Boom, nailed it. No one should be able to influence you except in a good way, okay? Right? If you tell yourself how, how, how the day is going to go before it starts, there's a pretty good chance that when someone runs into you and they're like, hey, man, this sucks. You're like, bro, man, step out of my way. I'm having a great day. See you, dude. Like you're gone. And by the way, somebody goes to confront you, confront you. You can't confront with me. People have tried to get confrontational with me. It's physically impossible. Okay. I don't, I don't get confrontational with people. I don't care what you say about me. You say, Andy, you're the worst I've ever seen. You're a fake. You're a fraud. Love you, bro. Have a nice life. Appreciate you too, man. You look great today. <laughs> have a great day, man. They're like, damn it. I can't break this guy. Sorry. Ain't going to happen. Nice try. Nice try. Take that from me, please. Steal that. Okay. Mentally tough. Mentally tough. Write that down. Mentally tough. 
Mentally tough is one of the strongest things that I would tell you would change everything. This is a mind game. If you don't own your mind, someone else will. Okay? If you don't own your mind, someone else will. That's it. This is a mind game. Take control of your mind. You got anywhere from 16,000, okay? See you, Dawson. 16,000 to 60,000 thoughts going through your head today. As these thoughts are coming in your head, as they are coming in your head, what happens? You either let them enter the brain and they become weeds in your brain. And then eventually those weeds are going to come out of your mouth and you're going to say something like, man, you know, I just don't know if I'm in the right job. Well, guess what happens? You just screwed yourself. Okay. You know what the Navy SEALs do? They do what's called hell week, right? You know what they do? They run around with the bell and they, 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 they tell the Navy SEALs, these strong warriors that all they get to do is ring the bell and they can go home. Okay, come on, man. Come on, dude. Come on. Ring the bell. You can go home. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just ring it, man. You don't have to go through pain anymore. Ring the bell. Come on, man. You don't have to do this, man. Your family's at home. Your kids go sit with them on the couch. They're watching movies right now. Ring the bell. That's the world. They're all trying to tell you, ring the bell. You don't have to be here. Mentally tough. I ain't ringing no damn bell, okay? I'm going hard until I die. I'm going to be my kids' heroes. This is you. Every single one of you steal this from me. I wish there would have been somebody there for me when I was younger that would have explained the same thing to me, that there's such thing as mental toughness and that it's a mind game in this business. And if you don't own your mind, someone else will own you. No one's going to own you for the rest of your life. My mentors in life are people that have gone where I want to go. Okay. One of them is David Goggins. If you guys don't know who David Goggins is, I would highly recommend writing that down right now. He's one of the people that I study for mental toughness. He's one of my mentors. I would tell you this, just like I'm going to meet him one day. And just like I'm going to pick, him, pick his brain and I want to know everything about him. As you're learning to do sales with me, I want to get to meet all of you guys one day. I want to train with all of you at a master closer seminar. I want to train with you all the time. I want to teach you the way to win constantly. But that's right. Like Dennis said, stay hard. He's one of the hardest guys out there. So anyways, my point is mental toughness. How do you rate yourself one to 10 on your mental toughness? If somebody says something about you, and let me give you an example. Okay. Dennis just said, stay hard. If I said this to Dennis, Hey, Dennis, man, you suck, dude. You're one of the worst salespeople I've ever seen in my life. Conrad, yeah, good. Goggins is a certified sicko. You're right. The guy ain't going to let anybody get in his head. He owns it, okay? Suffer in pain, right? That's where, the, that's where the greatness comes out of you, okay? That's where, man, I'm telling you, that's what mental toughness is about, is when life ain't all sunshine and rainbows, you don't break and fall apart, Okay? A lot of people, they're great. And then like a death happens in their family or something happens. Somebody loses a job or somebody that, that was important to them in their life says something about them and, and they just break. Mental toughness is extremely important. In the car business, we got to be very thick skin. Okay. Very thick skin. Okay. So guess what happens? When they say something to you, you just need to laugh it off, man. These people are saying stuff to you because of the way that they're feeling about themselves. I assure you, laugh it off. Mental toughness, having a clear why. Everybody write down the word why. Why? Why would you want to be the best in the world? Why would you want to go all in? Why? Why would you train like hell? Why would you give it everything you got? Why would you watch this video till the end? Why would you watch the recording of it a hundred more times? Why? My why, I've got three kids. My wife, she's my queen. You know, and I'm going to take care of her, unbelievable, until I die. And then also you guys. I love all you guys, and I love my team. And my goal is to create the world's most elite salespeople, and I'm not going to anybody, ever have anybody stop me on doing that. I'm like a tsunami hitting the beach at chasing my why. If you get in my way, I'm going to run you over. And I love you the whole way, but I will run you over. 
Blood, which is like family, sometimes is the biggest things that stops people. I've learned that my closest supporters have never been my blood. It hasn't been my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister. It's been complete strangers. And it's kind of crazy because I talk to a lot of you guys all the time and I'm telling you how great you are and how you're going to go get what nobody believed you could ever get. You're going to have the best life ever and the best lifestyle ever. You're going to be filthy rich. You're going to have a great life. Okay. And what happens is when somebody in your family finds out that you're playing extra hard, maybe you're paying for some training or maybe you're going all in on yourself for once. They don't like that. So what do they do? They tell you, hey, we like you just the way you are. You don't have to do any of that. And they try to convince you to play small, okay? So the deal is, is that what is your why? My why is I wanted to have generational influence. I want to change my family forever. My family tree, we're not going to teach people anymore how to think small. We're going to teach people how to go get what's theirs and have a great life. And guess what? And have freedom. That's what I'll teach you guys. So what is your why? If you don't know what your why is, this isn't a one to 10, okay? Write down your why, okay? Why? What is it that you're working for? When your back's against the wall and you're having your worst day ever and you wake up and you just lost your best customer, the sun ain't shining, you ain't feeling motivated, you're broke, okay? You and your wife or your girlfriend, boyfriend are arguing, right? Why would you keep giving everything you got? Why? Write it down, okay? You got to know that. If you don't know that, you can't make it. It's physically impossible. You can't have enough passion. I've got, I've got more heart than 10,000 men. If I go into battle, you come against me, I'll crush you. That's what you need to feel against the world. You know why? Because you're why. They don't have one and you do. And you've got a bigger one than theirs. And it's stronger and it's more clear about what yours is. Okay? Why? All right, time blocking. Write that down. Quit wasting time. Quit wasting time. You got to time block. If you don't time block, if you do not time block, you're going to waste time. Time blocking means this. You get to work at 9 a.m. and you get off at 6 p.m. How does your day go? Okay. When Obama was a president, right, I was reading, this isn't about Republicans or Democrats or presidents. I was reading something on him, and it talked about he time-blocked his day every four minutes throughout the day because he had so many things that he needed to get done that literally they had him on a timer, and they would say, done, next four minutes, go, this is what we're doing. And that was the only way that he could do. He, he time-blocked his day so much, it was like his time to have fun. Time to have with their family. Well, people I hear all the time, they say, I don't have time. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I don't care how big you get, you always have time. But you got to start time blocking. Stop wasting time. The only thing that's non-refundable in life is time. Stop wasting it. One day you're going to wish you could go back and get all of it, all right? Okay? Go all in right now. I ain't going to die with any regrets. I ain't wasting any time. You guys aren't going to waste any time anymore. If you've been wasting time, cool. That shit's over with. It's all about from today forward, okay? No more wasting time, time block, write out your schedule, write it out the night before, the night before, not when you wake up in the morning. I write it out the night before, I know how the next day is gonna look, I go get the day, the next day, okay? All right, you gotta make short runways. I've got three more things and then I got something special for you guys. Short runways, what does short runways mean? It means this. So today is March 26th. Tomorrow, my team and me and all of us have been working extremely hard. We've been working 18 hours a day. It's just the truth. And, uh, and, and we love it. It's not for everybody, but we love it. And um, I told the guys on, sun, on Saturday, which is tomorrow, we're all going to meet pool top 11 o'clock, have a big lunch. Um, we're going to get some rays, get some sun, and we're going to have fun. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna just put everything down for a little bit. That's a short runway. All week long, while they're working hard, they're looking forward to that Saturday. My wife, I was just talking to her about going to the beach. Some of you guys need to take a vacation, okay? But you need to decide when your vacation is going to happen 
and then you put it on the calendar and then you work like hell until that day gets there. And then when it gets there, you go enjoy and you let it all back and it completely revives you. And guess what happens? I call these short runways. Every month, I have a runway on my schedule. And sometimes it could be like this. It could be date with me, my wife, and my kids. And we're just going to drive two hours away. And we're going to go stay in some cabins at nowhere special, cost a couple hundred dollars. And we're just going to get away from our house for the weekend. My wife doesn't have to worry about cleaning it. We get away with the kids. You know, we take a little journey to go do something different. It's not a big, adventurous, expensive weekend. It's just something small, but we're doing it together. But I put it on the map to be a short runway. I think it's good to have runways every month about disconnecting. When people fly out and they come out to the Master Closer Seminar, one of the things that I see every time is that because they have it on the schedule and they know that they're going to leave now and they know they're going to go train, that they get so jacked up and they start working really crazy hard because they know they're going to be gone during that time. So what happens? They do better. And then when they're here, they learn. And then when they go back home, they're reset. It, it, it's such a good break. But make sure you have short runways every single month. If you're, if you're selling too many cars, if you're not selling, <clears throat> let's rephrase that. If you're selling under 20 cars right now, there could be a chance that you don't understand what the problem is. You could have a little taste of burnout. Maybe you have a little taste of burnout inside of you. You got to get rid of that. I don't ever burn out. I don't ever burn out. I'm passionately in love with everything that I do, but I never burn out. But I know it's possible for me to burn out. But the short runways keep me from ever burning out. So I want you to think about that and I want you to write that down. Okay, so runways. Guys, plan a runway within the next 30 days. Make sure you plan it. Also on top of that, we're just going to talk about two more things and then we're going to get on to something cool for you guys, okay? The next one's going to be social media. What does that mean? That means this. You got to be involved in social media, okay? Look, your phone is a tool or you're a tool. It's one or the other, okay? Your phone is a tool or you are a tool. You have to decide, does your phone own you? Do you use your phone to make money or with social media? Or do you use your phone to waste time watching people so on social media? Let me ask you a question. Do you watch the news or do you make the news? You guys are going to make the news. And how you're going to do it is you're going to start leveraging social media. That right there, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to give you any ideas. But if you don't know how to use social media, and you want to dominate it. I will tell you, it is the fastest way. 2021 and forward is about speed. If you don't know how to use it, you guys have my number. Rate yourself from one to 10. Some of you guys may be an eight and you're doing great. And you're like, man, tell me there's more because I'll do it. Okay, cool. Some of you may be like, dude, Andy, I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. All right, you're a one. Let me, let me show you. Okay, does that make sense? All right, social media. Last one here is going to be closing and objection handling. Obviously, I can't tell you how important this is. I hear everybody tell me how they need more opportunities. Some of you need to focus on stop missing opportunities. So I want you to do this. I want you to write down closing and negotiating. This is very important to me. And this is why we created the Master Closer Seminars, because we teach closing and negotiating. We have the objection handling course. This is a course that I have on the LA Group Now website. It's called the objection handling course. And there's 60 videos that teach you how to be deadly at handling objections. It's 299 bucks. You can train on it for the rest of your life. It's a 60 video course. It's deadly. When someone tells you no, if you don't know how to get them to say yes, you're never going to get what you're worth. That's it. And by the way, Competence creates confidence. Some of you want to be more confident in what you're doing. You want to be more confident in what you're doing, but you don't know how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. And how do you do it? It's, because, it's called skill acquisition. You have to acquire more skill. 
So with that being said, closing and negotiations is very important and objection handling. So what I'm gonna do is that we're at 12 o'clock now for the next 30 minutes, I've got some of the toughest objections in the dealership. And I chose a couple of them and I thought we would talk about them. And I'm gonna show you how to handle some stuff. We're gonna write down the objection and we're gonna go through it. And we're gonna spend the last 30 minutes on some simple techniques. How when someone says no, how to get them to say yes. I'm gonna go grab one of my guys so that I can role play with somebody. So it's not me just talking to you. I want you to see the way that we actually do it together. Okay, give me a second, Sean. I'll be right back. Hey, one minute is all I'm giving you. You're okay. right, Sean. Say, say what's up, Chuck. What's going on, my brothers and right sisters? Do you guys having a lot of fun? You're learning a lot. You're taking massive yeah. amounts of notes. We're getting crazy. This is what we do every single day of our lives. Is we give it all for you, so you can unwind or rewire to get paid what you're worth. The journey of my life of the last year has been so freaking epic. I've spent 20 years in the car business, 20 years in marriage. Those are the only two things I know how to do in life: is the auto industry and marriage. And so to be here after finding a line, Andy, after an alignment and planning that perfect day and getting my shit together, my life has scaled so fast. And I really hope that you're taking his words because what's going to happen is you process words and what somebody is saying three ways. Do I believe it? Can I do it? And is he full of shit? And that's what happens. That's how the, the mind processes what humans are saying when they converse. Okay. So I ask you this. Go all in and just say, I believe what Andy's saying. I'm going to go all in on myself and watch what your life looks like in 90 days. All right. So we got the word track king, Ryan Button, run and Andy. Did you Elliott. say button? Button. Did He's button. button. He's button tracks. All right. Listen, we love guys. you all. Let's go, guys. We'll all see right. you. Hey, guys, check this out. So look. So we got Ryan here. <laughs> I'm going to scoot back because he's so freaking tall. Look, yeah. hold on. Let's stand next to each other. Hey, you guys know why they call him the Uzi now? Someone take a photo of this. Hey, come this. on, let's hey. go. Hey, guys, take a shot real quick. Look, come on. Look, 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 look how big he is, man. Okay, look, anyways. Yeah. Take it back. They got their phones down to do a street shot. Here, here's what come I want to do. Hey, What's listen. up, Lord? Yeah, hey, all right. hey, hey, I'm going to make a deal with you guys. You take a screenshot of this right now, and you post it. I'll give you the closer techniques course for free. You what? Say, yeah, what? Yeah, I'll send it Come to on. you. Come on, take a Please. screenshot of this, blast it out there. Oh, yeah. Let's roll. All right, Love you, guys. you guys got my Go. cell phone. You text it or text your coach. All right, so listen. Close to the coach nation. Here's what I want to do. So I, I come up with a couple objections. I grab I grab Ryan to bring him in here. He's like, Andy, what's up? I'm like, dude, I need you for <laughs> just a couple minutes. Here's what we're gonna write these down. Write these down. You guys ready? We're gonna cover. I got a few more cars to go look at. We're going to cover price objections. Mm -hmm. I got a few more cars to see. I'm going to cover price objections. I'm going to cover them too far on the phone. I feel like this is important. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Look, you're just a little bit too far away. I think I'm going to look for one more locally, right? You know what I'm saying? Because it's the internet age, right? So we got to make sure that we cover some phone stuff on the internet. Also, I want to talk about um, that cars just sold. Like, hey, Ryan, I appreciate it, man. But I was only interested in the car you just sold. Right. I'm going to keep looking around. Right? right. You guys ever get that? You know what I'm saying? That right there is a good one. You got to know how to handle. I just sold that car. Remember this. Guys, I've got 400 objections. I'm going to teach you a couple yep. that I feel like that will give you some great value today for free to help you level up your game. Okay. And, and really to show you that it's worth going all in on yourself. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. OK, um, I also want to cover payment on the phone, Ryan. Okay. I thought this is an important one. I feel like if anybody's in a subprime store, we call people and we say things like this, you know, uh, hey, man. So great news. I got you approved. Mm -hmm. You know, what time can you make it down? And the customer's like, oh, cool. Uh, so what's my payment? Mm -hmm. And that right there is where That's remember I said uncertainty, mm -hmm. like somebody may have uncertainty in themselves. And then guess what happens? The customer flees and they don't come in. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're you're you're, you're setting fake appointments. Right. And then I want to cover just a classic, which I feel like everybody knows, which is I need to think about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to think about it. All right. This is a simple, simple deal. Someone comes in, they look at a car, and they yeah. hit you with the typical stall. Hey, appreciate it. I need to think about it. Yeah. We're gonna cover those and we're done. Ryan, yeah. it's 1205. Yeah, no, I only I'll, need you for I'll, 25 minutes. Yeah, and I was going to say, guys, look, whether we cover all of them or whether we cover three of them, it doesn't matter. Guys, the whole point is Andy and I aren't here to be showmen. 
We want to actually teach you. So I'd rather cover two or three of them and you to actually fully understand them, be able to go back to the lot, go back to the phone today on the pencil and be able to nail somebody down, close them for all the money and get paid what you're worth instead of just us putting on a little show for you, going over 30, 40 word tracks, and you sitting back like, oh my God, they're good, but I didn't learn anything. That's not the yeah. point of this. No, Zoom we want call. you to kill it. We love you guys. Yeah, we want, to, we want you guys to literally go home and know exactly what to do. And we'll break them down just a little bit so yeah. that people, because one of the most common questions we get is like, hey, look, that's a phenomenal word track, but I'm just not good at learning. I'm not good at learning the word tracks. Guys, number one, you have to take the time to learn them. And we were talking, you were talking about uh, the Navy SEALs, right? I was listening to this thing on my way over here and they're talking about, it was Marcus, um, Marcus Luttrell, the guy from the, the Lone Survivor movie. Yep. He said, it was, on the, it was on the podcast. He said, look, the reason that Navy SEALs differentiate themselves from everybody else is that they don't actually start to teach you going through buds. They don't actually start to teach you until you're on day five of no sleep. You're so tired. You're so worn out that when they teach you, it's all muscle memory they're not teaching you when you're fresh they're teaching you when you're so tired that you have to know it and that's a lot of these word shocks guys you go work bell to bell you're like ryan i ain't got time to learn these word shocks afterwards that's exactly the time when you're supposed to learn these word shocks is when you're so tired that they have to stick that's Woo -hoo! guys can we give it up yeah, yeah. boy yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. hey do you guys see the beast oh that goodness. can be created. I'm going to explain this to you. As I as I talk to every one of you right now, <laughs> six months ago, I grabbed this young man Woo! and I said, listen to me. I want to show the world that I can create the most elite salespeople. Yep. I grabbed him at 22 years old when he wasn't great at learning. He wasn't great at saying so he's got ADD. He doesn't. <laughs> I mean, the deal is he's just like everybody. He said, man, I'm not good at doing this. I'm not good at that. I said, stop it. We're recreating you. And guess what happened? Today, we sit here and six months later, which is where you could be six months from now, mm -hmm. two months from now, guess what happens? Bam, Ryan Brunton, he's recreated and rebuilt just like we are with you. And by the way, this guy's not even getting warmed up. Neither am I or neither mm -hmm. is you. We're, grow, we're growing and we're growing as a team together. Let's get into some objections. Yeah. Well, so you want to you handle this one? The few cars? Yeah, so look, I'll, I'll handle, my uh, baby, we're going to handle, my wife's always like, dude, you guys are crazy. Making too much um, noise. Making too much noise. <laughs> um, here's the deal. So I'm going to handle the few more cars to look at, and then I'll bust Ryan up on the price. Look, this is going to be really simple, okay? And, and by the way, some of you guys know this, and some of you guys say you know it, okay? Some of you guys say you know it, and you say, hey, Andy, I know that one. I'm like, cool, man, do it for me. And you're like, oh, well, um, I, you know, I kind of know how it goes. But like, hey, look, one to 10, how well do you know it? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do you really know it? I mean, seriously. Can you say it in front of 400 people at a master closer seminar? That's how bad you need to know it. Bam, you got it. So it's real simple. This is going to be, I got a few more cars to go look at. By the way, we'll send you this recording when we're done if you want it, okay? So it's really simple, and it's a very easy one. Ryan, I'm sitting here talking to him. We go on a test drive. Ryan says, hey, Andy, look, I appreciate it. I got a couple more cars I want to go look at. And what do I say to Ryan? I say, hey, number one, I totally get it. Always right. agree. Hey, I totally understand. Look, let's say, Ryan, mm -hmm. that you had already gone and seen all those other vehicles, right? Mm -hmm. And then this one right here, Ryan, you see this beautiful 2018 Nissan Altima with yeah. 23,000 miles, yeah. the one you just test drove. Yeah. It was the last one that you went and saw. Look, after seeing all of them, Ryan, all those other ones and mine right here, in the end, in the end, Ryan, what would be the determining factor, the final deciding factor on actually which vehicle you'd actually end up purchasing? Look, would it be the car itself? regardless of the deal or Ryan, do you think it would be the great deal that the dealership's willing to give you? Which one? And you notice how I said, would it be the car itself regardless of the deal or watch my hand. I put it out like this, like this is the answer. And then I nod my head. I said, or would it be the great deal that the dealership's willing to give you? Which one? Smile, smiling eyes, hand, Head nodding, they say, that'd be the deal. Mm -hmm. I say, cool, man. So what you're saying is it's not a matter of if you're going to buy something, it's when. And the win is when the deal's right. Am I right? Right. Cool. So if I could save you some time and money, would that offend you in any way? Thank goodness. Follow me. Bam. And then I take Ryan with me. Notice, write down something for me. Never stick to the objection. Never stick to the objection. 
this is what was sticking to the objection would look like. Tell me you got a couple more cars to look at. Hey, Andy, I appreciate you. I just have a few more cars I want to look at, and I'll definitely get back with you. Oh, okay. So what So what are they? Um, they're, they're similar. Uh, <laughs> guys, time out. If they wanted to go buy those cars, they would be there buying those cars right now. They're not. They're here in front of you. They're hitting you with the stall tactic. Yeah. Maybe they got a couple more cars they want to go look at, right? But the idea of it is, is that will you isolate that objection and try to handle it? Or will you just overcome it and move on with the deal? Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm going to overcome it and move on with the deal and get on. Okay. So with that being said, that is a very simple one. Yeah. And that's, I got a couple more cars to go with yeah. that. It's and, a very and, common objection. And you're just agreeing with them, playing future expectations and then really funneling them down. You know, and I think the important point is sometimes when we go train with people or when, you know, people, you know, do the workshops at the seminar, they say, look, would it be the car itself, regardless of the deal or the car you got the best deal on? But you don't want to leave it that open ended. If you notice, Andy always says, which one? So he's telling you, you have to pick one of those two. He's not allowing you to have like freedom of thought. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. You're controlling their mind. Yeah. You're controlling it. And, and let's say he does say it. So say it's the car. Well, it, it, the car, I mean, the, the car. So the it would be the car. Okay, cool. So even if the car was 10 grand more than you wanted to pay, you still buy it? No, of course you would. It would be the deal, right? Right. Pull them back to the deal. Yeah. See that? Done. Yeah. And if you notice how Andy says, um, even if it was 10,000 more than you wanted to pay, you would still buy it. Of course not. He's not allowing the customer to answer that question. He's answering it for them and then still moving on with the deal. So the most important part about these word tracks is look, everything that he set up, it's psychology. Like it's not just like logic. Like it's literally not manipulation, but really just kind of like mind screwing them and to do really what they feel in their gut is right. And the most important thing that you can steal from Andy, steal from me is the passion. If you hear this man, the passion he has when he says it, that's what's getting people to really stick with their gut and buy. Right. The words are logical. Guys, your emotion is what closes deals. Passion is the strongest thing that you can have. Yes. And, and when we say the word like mind screw, let me make sure I can explain it because yeah. I know we've always got that one person out there that's saying he's mind screw. Uh, Listen, guys, we use a lot of slang. Yeah. What I mean is, is that it's people knowledge. It's persuasion. Mm -hmm. It's people knowledge. 5% of this business is product knowledge. 95% is people knowledge. Just so you can understand, we know how to play chess with people. We know what they want. We know that they don't want to go shop around in a bunch of lots. We know that that would be a miserable experience. And we know that if we made that happen for them, we would yeah. do them an injustice right. and actually not be doing our job mm -hmm. if we didn't close them. Mm -hmm. You think your customers want the salesperson to close them so that they can go home in their new car and move on to other things in life? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. You think they want to go shop around? misery it's just roaming inside because they've never met a good salesperson before mm -hmm. until they met you mm -hmm. and that's what we're wanting you to do is to be unstoppable good great and unstoppable all right let's do this yeah. let's move on to the next one this yeah. is going to be price someone just asked about price i want you to think about this one real quick okay ryan let's run through a price objection okay and, and by the way let, let's run it on the phone is that cool yeah, yeah. okay okay cool hey ryan so listen i really appreciate you giving me all the information on that 2018 mm -hmm. Uh, Ford F-150 with right. 30,000 miles. Look, I saw its price for $29.9. Look, um, is that your best deal? Yeah. I'd say, hey, look, Andy, I'm so glad you asked that question. So look, our store, what we do here is actually super unique. We do what's called market-based pricing. I'll tell you the research shows 90% of my customers, man, they don't want to haggle over price. And they want to get the best price up front. So that's what our store, we actually use very expensive and accurate tools that find vehicles just like this Ford F-150 that you're looking at, just like that in the marketplace. And they find them right now in the marketplace. Then those tools, they price all of our vehicles for us, our entire inventory to make sure we're always priced below market. According to the stats on this particular vehicle, this particular truck you're calling on, it's 85% to market. Meaning, look, it's actually 15% below fair market value. But I'll tell you, Andy, look, not only have we great at price, we're also high in all the critical areas important to you and your family, like price, payments, and trade-ins. And actually, I apologize. I forgot to ask you, were you going to be trading anything in with us today? Are payments going to be important to you? Roll off of price. You never want to get stuck on price on the phone, Brandon, to answer your question. Yes. And that right there, listen, let me explain what we just did. So everybody's clear. We gave an answer. We didn't say, listen, what we, I want you to write down what we didn't say. We didn't say, um, sir, we don't put our second best price up front. We put our first best price. So yes, that is our best price. Do you think your customers want to hear you say that's our best price? No, they don't. Now, listen, Ryan told them that it was our best price without telling them 
that it was our no best friction. Class. Yeah, guys, remember friction during training, friction creates growth. Friction on the deal equals a customer saying, appreciate you. You know what? We're going to keep shopping around. We'll get back with you. Mm -hmm. Now watch. Let's just say I'm talking to him on the phone, right? And then it goes kind of simple here. I say, mm -hmm. hey, Ryan, so, I mean, so you're telling me that there's there's no way that I could get a, a better deal at all? Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. say they run round two on you. You need to be prepared again. Let's say they run round three on you. Yeah. You need to be, par be prepared again. Guys, we teach a pricing defense line in the master closer seminars. If you guys haven't ever bought the elite negotiating course, the elite negotiating course is a 20 section course that runs through. And what it does is that that course, it literally allows you to understand how to go through 10 rounds, 20 rounds of pricing with somebody mm -hmm. without saying anything like Kelly Blue Book, NADA, you know, or something like that. Notice we use the word market yeah. because what's the market? We well, are. the market is us. Yeah. And I say, I say the biggest thing is too many of you guys, I'm not saying you particularly, but salespeople out there, especially people who feel like they're the top dog at their store. Mm -hmm. Guys, look, your customer has the right to ask for a better price. Yeah, I do. I just, want. yeah, just because I ask for a price doesn't mean I'm a bad guy. Too many people get defensive and get like, let, let their ego get in the way and make it confrontational. Of course, it's my best price. What, what, what do you think? I'm not going to put my best price out there. And I'm not saying that's what you guys are saying, but I'm just saying like, don't let your ego get in the don't way. Don't get like, offended when yeah, somebody tests you. Yeah. yeah. Don't get offended when somebody tests you. Okay. Yeah. Right. Remember this. How many bullets do you have in your chamber? Mm -hmm. You got one, 10. Yeah. 20? No, exactly. And, and that word track too, like we'll send you these workshops at the end. So everybody, if you're hopping off, hopping back on, we'll send them to you at the end. But what I want you to pay close attention to is, as Andy always says, so many salespeople, when they get hit with an objection, they say 70% good and 30% bullshit, okay? So what you want to focus on is that word track. I'm not saying like, hey, look, maybe my manager or maybe Bill do something or- Yeah, and, oh, don't, and don't ever say manager. Look, yeah. look, explain to them authority for a second. Yeah, guys, look, when you say manager, and we'll go into that the, the payment one, because we'll show you how to keep authority, but yeah. also like- put it off your plate so people like still recognize you as an authority. But when I, when I say manager, when someone tells me manager, I'm like, dude, go get your manager. Like you're a little, you're trash to me now. You know what I mean? Like you're not the guy, like you're not the guy you said you were going to be, you know, you lost all authority with the customer. When you, want, when you yeah. lose authority, you lose control, you lose the sell. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to beat, beat up, you, beat you up on just price. If you lose authority, I can guarantee you that. Yeah. And here's the deal. And by so. the way, people have the right to ask for a better deal. That's one of the biggest deals. People have the right to ask for a better deal. Let them. Mm -hmm. But how prepared are you? Are you truly prepared to handle that? Smile and say, mm -hmm. hey, man, I'm so, think about this. Hey, man, I'm so glad you asked that. Hey, Andy, is that your best deal? Hey, man, I'm so glad you asked that. How many times do you think a salesperson told them that? Hey, Ryan, I'm so glad yeah. you asked that. Those people are like, oh, man. They expect like, they confrontation. Get, they, they want get, the confrontation. And they get deflated. Yeah. Like, damn it. I was hoping this guy was just going to take it. Yeah. Yeah, no, he asked for a better deal and say, hey, man, I'm so glad you asked that, exactly. right? And then move on. All right, let's 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 keep going, okay? Can, you want, can we hit the payment one just so that we can talk about authority? Is that yeah, right? let's roll. All okay. right, all right, so I'm going to hit Ryan. Hey, hey, Ryan, listen, man, Ryan calls me. Hey, Andy, great news. I got you approved. When can you make it? Remember that Apollo you were looking out? Got everything done. What time can you make it in? Yeah, and why, why I want to touch on this one is because it's a perfect example of how to maintain authority, but also, like, take that pressure off your plate and allow your customer to like understand that you don't kind of control that, but you're still the guy, you're still their man. So it, it's real simple that when someone says, Hey, you know, what's my payment going to be? And this could, I guess could even be kind of like on the lot too. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like outside or something. Yeah. Like you work on it, but let's use it as the phone. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. let's say, Hey, look, our licensed finance department, they use a very strict budgeting program to ensure you don't ever have to worry about your payment being too high. In fact, I'll tell you, look, 90% of my customers who have had that same concern in the past, they actually left with a much lower payment than they were expecting. So look, I'm glad you asked that question. We're always phenomenal in that area. Sir, so getting to know you here on the phone for a little bit, I can tell you, look, you definitely don't need to have any concerns with us. What time can you make it in this afternoon? Bam. Roll it Done. off. But if you notice how I said licensed finance department, licensed finance department, I'm not saying anything else. So it's kind of like, just like Andy was saying, like maintaining authority. You know what I mean? That's it. And you sound like, and by the way, if you're listening to him, he sounds like a professional. Mm. He doesn't sound like a car salesman. We train our people to sound like advisors and guides, not car salesmen. Right. We want you to be someone 
that your customer has never seen before in their life. And for that reason, they'll do things that they've never done before in their life. Mm -hmm. And never paid what anybody was asking for their car until you met me. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just yeah. different. Okay. And I won't say that, but the way that I handle myself allows what? The customer to do things differently than they've done. Mm -hmm. Listen, there's a difference between being prepared and truly being prepared. Okay. Anyways, with that being said, um, and that's kind of like just the thing that you were talking about. Like, look, if you guys sound like your competition, they're going to treat you like ooh, your competition. Hey, write that down. Write that if down. If you sound like your competition, they're going to treat you like your competition. You're not the first vehicle they bought. I guarantee you 98% of these customers, they bought vehicles before. Hell, they maybe buy one a year. You know what I mean? Do you ever talk about part-time negotiators? Yeah. Full-time negotiators. Yeah, we were talking about the other day, you know, hey, you know, we, we, you know, we sell cars every day and customers buy a car one time a year. Yeah. And, really. and all of a sudden they're better at negotiating than we are and we do it every day. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Listen. People that are afraid of anything like objection handling, closing, negotiating, it's only because it's just a lack of training. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, I always say the difference between where you are and where you want to go, right, is the gap in your skill set. That, mm -hmm. that, that line between that, that gap, that's called skill acquisition. And if we fix your skill, well, it'll fix the gap. It'll take mm -hmm. you where you want to go. And you'll never have a lack of money again ever for the rest of your life. Okay, so dive in on the training hard today. Okay, yeah. right? Like I said, reach out to one of me or one of my coaches or somebody. And let's make sure that we can dial in a program that's great for you that can put you on the fast track to success. Don't put your success on hold. Okay, mm -hmm. if you know there's a better version of you, if you know you're built for greatness, if you know how awesome you could be, um, get a coach and go great. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just like going to the gym, right? Yeah. You can go to the gym and work out by yourself. But if you go get a personal trainer, yeah, you got to pay for one, but you go get a personal trainer. What happens is you get in shape in 90 days, mm -hmm. you got a six pack or the other way you spend and waste a whole, you know, a year or two in the gym. Guys, I get in better shape every day. I'm 41. I got a six pack. Okay. I mean, I'm just making a point. Like I used to be fat, right? I mean, it, dude, I, I was out of shape and like, I was just in the gym going through the motions. And what I did is that I said, Hey man, I want to get in great shape. So I went and got a trainer, right? Yeah. And the trainer, he beat the crap out of me. I was doing movements and things that I never did because I wouldn't have done those things without someone pushing me. Right. I needed him to get me on track. And then that allowed to be the guy that I am today. And, you know, like I just, I never stopped training. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so anyways, I'm just saying like, you know, a, a trainer elevates your life. Um, but they got to know you. They got to know who you are and what you struggle with, which is what we've been talking about the whole time is for you to find holes in your game mm -hmm. and then physically take. And, you know, I, 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 we call it fast wins. Right. Like we're addicted to fast wins. OK, I, I know a lot of people, they run some slideshow bull crap when they're training. Uh, we, we don't do that. OK, we're very hands on. We love to be great teachers and we're not just showmen because we want to physically take who you are and show you who you could be if you would just go all in on yourself. Remember, nobody right. ever remembers that guy that never went all in, okay? Right. It's the time. Um, okay, so we got the payment. Uh, car just sold. Can we cover that one real quick? Yeah, yeah. Okay, car just sold. So, so like, be on the phone or on the lot. Yeah, let's say it's on the lot because I yeah. feel like that's, I feel like on the lot is a big one, mm -hmm. right? Guy pulls up, he's like, hey man, I was looking for that F-150. Salesman's like, ooh, um, hmm, you know, I'm just kidding, right? But he's like, uh, oh, give me just a second. You know, I think, I think it's over here. Something like that. You know, right. and then you pull that little runaway deal <laughs> and you come back out and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, we just sold it this morning. And, and, and the second you deliver it's sold, you know what they do? They say one thing. Thanks, man. I'll keep looking. Appreciate you. Right. That's it. Because you've deflated them because they feel like they just missed out on the car that was perfect for them. So how do you take out they just missed out part? Mm -hmm. And then how do you open the cell to continue to let them keep shopping with you? Exactly. So Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, I'll say, hey, look. So, you know, somebody pulls on the lot and then look, they can still be in their car. You know what I mean? And they say, hey, look, the car, um, you know, you just sold that vehicle. I say, hey, look, the car just sold. Look, I'll tell you this. When we put these cars in the front line, they sell very fast. Look, sir, the car you came in on, it actually had some scratches on the rear door panel. Look, if it was still available, I would have told you, it's probably not your sharpest pick. But look, let me ask you this. If I could show you a newer vehicle, lower miles, that was actually in a better price range, would that upset you at all? Man, of course not. Come on, look, it sounds like you're pretty much open. You just want to find something similar and get a great deal. Am I right? 
Exactly. Look, I got hundreds just like it. I'll walk through them with you. And sir, in the end, it's completely your decision. Does that sound fair? That's it. Roll. That is how you handle and cover every single person that says, I'm only interested in the car you just sold. Right. Number one, you take away the feeling, right? You take away the feeling and then you open the cell. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can get these word tracks, right? Yeah. What, what is the line yeah, that they yeah, can we'll listen? I, so, so you guys know my cell phone number. I have a community line. Okay. I'm going to type this right yeah. here. I'm going to type this. So guys, this is just the easiest way for Andy to be able to communicate with everybody. And it's going to be 480. Yeah. Let me type this in here. It's 480-470-1968. And I'll make sure that I'll get on him and make sure that he sends all the uh, word tracks over to everybody. Just text like word tracks or like zoom call or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just text, to send them yeah, text like zoom meeting word tracks or something like that. Here's the deal. That community line, I get those text messages right here. Mm -hmm. But when you text in, okay, it's not a cell phone. You can't call me. It's my community text line. Because like we send out daily motivation. And if you're on that line, like every morning, you'll get that daily motivation yeah. when we send it out, which that's cool. It just gets you fired That's probably up. how a lot of you guys got on the Zoom call. Yeah, you know yeah, it could be. But the idea of it is, is that if you text in the word tracks, um, I put it down there uh, in the bottom. It's 480-470-1968. Yeah. Okay, you can text that and just text like word tracks from Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll have Ryan send them over just like that. You can print them off, go through them and check them out. Okay, we've got hundreds of them, but just the ones that we've talked about, we'll make sure you get those. Okay, yeah. Uh, Andre, I'll give it to you one more time, but it, I put it in the uh, comments, but it's 480-470-1968. Let's cover one more. Is that yeah. cool? It's 1227. We got three more minutes. Okay, um, let's do one more. And... Um, the car just sold payments uh, too far. Can we cover too far? Yeah. Do we Is cover that, that one? Or no. Can we cover that? No, we didn't. No? Okay. Let's, no, let's, let's, let's do too far. Too far means this. Hey, Ryan, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for giving me all the information on that 2018 Ford F-150 with 40,000 miles. Um, I just really feel like I'm going to look for one more local. Right. You're just too far. Yeah. And, and guys, real quick, I'm going to go into that one. But one thing I want to cover is the importance that we just covered it in the car. Or, um, you know, we'll cover it in this one, actually. But it applies to all the word tracks. One of the biggest deals that you can do that Andy will teach you is to rephrase. Rephrase. Write it down. Rephrase. Here, but hold on. Write it down. Everybody yeah. just take a second. Write down rephrase. Okay. And hey, by the way, we're going to finish here in a minute. But I just want to tell all of you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean it. We love you. Absolutely. Thank all you guys. I mean it. We really care about you. We want to see you do extremely well. Crush it. We want you to destroy everybody. Okay. And we got your back for life. So, um, but rephrase means this, Ryan. Tell me it's late. Yeah. Hey, Andy, it's just getting late, man. Okay, cool. So when I hear you say, when I hear you say it's late, what I hear you say is that your time's important to you. Is that right or right? That's right. Okay, cool. So now, now it's a time <laughs> issue. I can't change it's late. Right. If I'm sitting down with a customer and it's nine o'clock at night. And the guy's like, hey, man, it's late. We're going to come back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you can't say, ah, no, it's late. But listen, man, you know, we're already this far into the deal. You know, let me just finish it. You're not handling it's late. What you want to do is rephrase. Yeah. Hey, I, hey, I totally get it, Mr. Customer. When I hear you say it's late, what I hear you say is that your time's important to you. Is that right or right? No, it is important to me. Okay, cool. What would take less time? Since we're 99% done with the deal, finishing the last 1% and doing it right now, or actually you leaving and coming back tomorrow, which would take a whole another two hours, what would be less time? Mm -hmm. Doing it right now. So what, since I'm extremely fast at handling this last 1%, right. let me go ahead and take care of that for you. Yeah. Boom! Now I rephrased. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I wanted, I wanted to teach what rephrase was. That was late, yeah. but now we're going to rephrase far. Yeah. Okay. And what rephrasing can do for you guys is when you get hit with an objection, kind of really allows you to ground yourself. You know what I mean? Like kind of establish your ground, hit them with a quick question and then be able to, you know, get that word track from like and, tap, that's yeah, tattooed and, on your Yeah, heart. and change the way that they think. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, like on the car just sold, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I was only interested in the car you just sold and they came in for like, you know what I mean? Like a Honda Civic. You could hit them with a quick rephrase, be like, hey, look, I completely understand. What it seems like to me is you're really looking for something that's number one, extremely economical, has amazing gas mileage, is has amazing safety ratings for you and your family, and really something that just fits the budget. Am I right? Yeah. That's a perfect rephrase, you know? So you don't have to go into these huge word tracks if right now you can just take that rephrase and run with it. Yeah. But when well, it, let's say the rephrase on far. Let's yeah. So when it, when it comes to too far, I would say, hey, look, you know, we're on the phone. You say, hey, I don't want to drive that far. I'll say, look, hey, I completely understand. And when I hear you say you don't want to drive that far, what I'm hearing is your time is very valuable to you. Am I right or wrong? 
Look, or am I right or right? Look, if your time is valuable, you need to deal with a professional that respects your time and understands how valuable time works. Look, I sell 90%, 90% of my customers one to five hours away. Do you know what that means? It means I have to be extremely good at respecting people's time as well as fast in my job. Look, you could go to your local store five minutes away, but we all know you just don't find the perfect vehicle in your own neighborhood. And I guarantee you this, Mr. Customer, if I had this car cleaned up, gassed up, ready to rock and roll when you got here, it'd be a better car buying experience, a faster car buying experience. Plus, look, the car you really wanted to buy instead of settling for something closer to you that most likely ends up costing you more time in the long run. Wouldn't you agree? That's it. That's it. And it's beautiful. And the deal is, is that, look, it's very simple. You guys have the ability. And by the way, um, you can't see this, but I have something on my board. It says, my goal is to make everyone in the world 10, 10 times better than me. Okay, that's my goal. So when I say this to you, sometimes, you know, I remember when I was younger, there was a guy who trained me. His name was, his name was uh, I call him Frenchy, but his name was Eric Malone. You call him Frenchy because he was like from London or something. He had this <laughs> accent that was really cool. But his name was Eric Malone. And he, and he still is a huge guy and vice president or president, president now, a big warranty company. But when I watched him when I was 18 years old and I watched the way this guy sold, he was so good. I remember just thinking, God, man, if I could be that good, I mean, I could go get whatever I wanted in life. And what I did is that I started to study him. And the more I studied him, I would write things down and I started practicing. I was really bad at learning. But what happened is I studied him every day. I studied him constantly. I thought about it for a long time and I thought about it all the time. And then I would study every single day. And what happened is that I looked up and within a year of training with this man all the time, spending a lot of money with him, okay? I looked up and honestly, man, I could compete with him. Mm -hmm. I would sit there and say, hit me with anything, hit me with anything, hit me with anything. And he would hit me with anything. And I'd be like, bam, 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 bam. And he was like, dude, you're getting really good, man. And that was all I needed. And I continued to spend money every single year. I just spent 15 grand the other day on another training program. I, I guys, I just like you spend money on training, I spend money on training all the time. Um, and it's a, the, the world's my library and it's gonna give me whatever I'm looking for. If you wanna be the best in the, in the automotive space in the world, we'll teach you how to do it. Oh, yeah. And our goal is not for us to ever be better than you, it's for you to be better than us, you're our legacy. Now we do get better every single day, okay? So you gotta stay with us and you gotta keep keeping up. By the way, you're worth it. I can't wait to see how far you go at the end of this day, at the end of this month, and at the end of this year, and as we continue to travel together. So we love you guys. Send that text message. He'll give you the word tracks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is Ryan yeah, Brunt. Yeah. If you haven't met him, he's always here with me. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got 20 guys that are here with our company. They're all amazing. We appreciate you. We're grateful for love you. you guys. Thank you guys. We love you. Go crush it today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Yeah, seriously. Finish the day. Finish the month. You guys go crush it. Destroy it. I'll see you guys soon, man. We love you guys. Have an amazing day. Adios.